France is quietly working on something that sounds technical, almost boring on the surface, but could reshape what a medium European frigate can actually do in a high-end fight. Naval Group is developing a French cold launch vertical launch system intended for the FDI frigate family, and the headline claim is straightforward. Take a ship designed around a baseline of 16 Aster missiles and grow that number towards 64 surface-to-air missiles by using the reserved deck pits that were built into the design from day one. But the real story isn't just more missiles. The real story is why France wants this particular kind of launcher, what it signals about Europe's industrial dependencies, and how a magazine-heavy FDI changes the math of air defense at sea when saturation attacks are the norm rather than the exception. Start with the basic limitation that haunts every surface combatant in 2025. You can have the best radar and the cleanest combat system architecture, but you cannot intercept what you cannot shoot and you cannot shoot what you did not bring. Modern anti-ship warfare is increasingly a contest of endurance under pressure. One raid is survivable, two raids are stressful, three raids can be fatal if your launch cells are empty and the next reload port is days away. That is why missile depth is becoming the defining currency of naval power and why even frigates are being judged by how long they can stay in the fight before they're forced to disengage. So when a design like the FDI, which already has a modern sensor suite, claims a path to quadruple its ready-to-fire air defense weapons without a new hull, that deserves attention. The question is not whether 64 is a nice number. The question is what a frigate with destroyer-like magazine behavior does to escalation control, escort doctrine, and export competitiveness. The enabling detail is the FDI's forward deck layout. Instead of a single fixed VLS block, the ship was built around multiple reserve spaces. One large rectangular area can already host two Silver A-50 modules side by side, giving 16 Aster missiles, typically the Aster-15 for point or local area defense and the Aster-30 for broader area defense. Ahead of that sit two additional square pits, essentially growth margins, designed to accept another launcher module each, either Silver A-50 or the longer A-70 used for weapons like the MDCN land attack cruise missile. That matters because it means the ship's growth path is not a costly redesign, it is a planned evolution. In other words, France is trying to turn a 4,000-5,000 ton class frigate into a flexible missile truck without breaking the ship's internal balance of sensors, command spaces, and mission payloads. And that leads to the next question. If the space was always there, why hasn't everyone already stuffed it full of missiles? Because not all missiles and not all launchers scale the same way. Aster is a hot launch family. The booster ignites inside the cell, which means heat, exhaust gas management, structural reinforcement, and safety margins. That's manageable, but it imposes physical and engineering constraints on how tightly you can pack cells, especially if you want the launcher to be robust across sea states, maintenance cycles, and decades of service. CAMM and CAMR, on the other hand, are built around cold launch. The missile is ejected from the canister before the motor lights. That reduces thermal stress inside the launcher and simplifies the architecture needed to handle exhaust and pressure. The practical implication is density. Cold launch lends itself to smaller, simpler, more packable modules that can carry many compact interceptors in a footprint that would be inefficient for larger hot launch weapons. If Naval Group can field a French cold launch system optimized for CAM family missiles, the forward pits become an opportunity for high volume defensive fire rather than just more of the same. But here's where the politics of engineering shows up. Integrating CAM into many NATO ships has often pointed toward US-made launcher ecosystems, including solutions like Lockheed Martin's XLS concept in some discussions. France's stated direction, as reported, is explicitly not to make XLS a requirement. That is a big deal. It signals a broader European impulse, preserve sovereign control over critical integration points, especially those that can bottleneck exports or upgrades. A VLS is not just a box in the deck, it is an interface that ties into combat management software, logistics chains, certification regimes, and long-term upgrade paths. Whoever owns that interface can shape what missiles you can buy, how quickly you can integrate new variants, and how independently you can operate in wartime when supply chains are stressed. So, a French cold launch system is not merely about packing CAM into an FDI. It is about ensuring that France and potential customers can choose a layered air defense mix without inheriting a dependency that comes with strategic strings attached. Now, the seductive part is the arithmetic. If one cold launch module can host up to 24 CAM missiles and both forward pits take one module each, then you're looking at 48 CAM plus the baseline 16 Asters in the A-50 pair, landing at 64 surface-to-air missiles. That is a serious number for a ship of this size. And because the FDI's mix-and-match approach remains intact, you can imagine alternative loadouts, more Aster cells for area defense emphasis, 
a silver A70 for MDCN for land attack strike credibility, or combinations that reflect the customer's threat model, add short-range point defense systems on top, and the total count of ready anti-air weapons can climb even higher. But the strategic value isn't in bragging rights, it is in what those extra missiles let you do operationally. A dense cam layer can absorb drones, helicopters, and sea-skimming cruise missiles without spending your premium long-range asters. It lets you keep Aster 30 in reserve for the targets that truly demand it. High-performance aircraft, standoff weapons at range, and the kinds of complex raid geometries where you need speed, kinematics, and reach. Still, a bigger magazine is not a magic shield. It shifts constraints rather than eliminating them. The first constraint is the sensor and fire control ecosystem. Can the ship detect, classify, and continuously manage enough tracks to exploit the extra missiles? The FDI Seafire Fixed Panel AESA radar is designed for high track capacity and modern engagement management, which is exactly the kind of architecture you want when the fight is not a single inbound missile, but a cluttered sky full of decoys, drones, and staggered salvos. Yet even with the strong radar, there are practical limits illumination requirements, data link capacity, and the combat system's ability to prioritize targets correctly under electronic warfare pressure. The second constraint is doctrine and budgeting. If you carry 64 interceptors, will you train to fire them decisively, or will you still behave like a ship with 16, holding shots too long and letting the threat compress into the terminal phase? Magazine depth only pays off if doctrine evolves with it. And the third constraint is logistics. You can't reload at sea in most realistic scenarios. Once the cells are empty, the ship's combat power collapses. More missiles delays that collapse, but it doesn't change the underlying truth that modern naval combat punishes any force that cannot sustain resupply and maintenance under threat. So why does this matter beyond France? Because it changes the export pitch and the European surface combatant landscape. If an FDI can credibly approach the defensive magazine depths that people associate with much larger destroyers, it starts competing in a space traditionally owned by heavier ships, Escort air defense for high-value units, sustained presence in contested choke points, and credible contribution to a task group's layered defense. It also pressures competitors. European navies that have relied on fewer, larger cells optimized for area defense may find themselves facing an awkward question. Is it better to have 48 big cells or a smaller ship with a mixed magazine that can throw a lot of interceptors at a raid without burning its top-tier missiles too early? Meanwhile, for customers like Sweden or others considering future frigates, the promise of a national or European launcher solution that supports multiple missile families is a way to buy capability without buying dependency. And there is an important timeline signal here. The system is described as becoming operational in the early 2030s. That implies Naval Group is positioning the FDI not as a static product, but as a platform that can remain commercially and militarily relevant through the next decade's threat environment. Ask yourself what the 2030s maritime air threat looks like. More autonomous systems, more cheap decoys, more coordinated raids, more hypersonic experimentation, and far more emphasis on exhausting defenses rather than penetrating them cleanly. In that world, quantity has a quality all its own, especially when quantity is layered intelligently with higher-end missiles. A frigate that can carry enough interceptors to survive multiple waves is not just harder to kill, it is harder to coerce. It can stay on station longer, escort longer and impose a higher cost on any attacker trying to solve the defense by simple saturation. So the key takeaway is not that the FDI is becoming an Arleigh Burke. It isn't, and it doesn't need to be. The takeaway is that France is trying to build a compact ship with the defensive staying power we normally reserve for larger hulls, while keeping the launcher ecosystem under national control and widening the missile menu for customers. The next few years will tell us whether this cold launch concept becomes a genuine European alternative that others adopt or a niche French solution. But one thing is already clear. In modern naval combat, the question, how many missiles do you have left, is often the only question that matters, and France appears determined to give the FDI a much better answer.